Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this presentation on The Clones Are Coming. Uh, my name is Rohit Mehta, and I'm a senior product manager on the platform team. I'm James Bognar. Um, I am also a senior software engineer on the Sandbox team. Cool. Before we get started, just a quick reminder on the forward-looking statements. Um, this presentation will have uh, references to, well, most definitely have references to, uh, in, to products and features that are not generally available today. Uh, just a reminder that make purchasing decisions based on generally available products. So a lot of you know that developing on the platform and being successful on the platform requires a very modern ELM or application lifecycle management process. This is a process that involves ideating your app, uh, building it, uh, coding it, testing it, uh, and deploying it finally to production. Now Salesforce provides a bunch of different tools to make you successful with ELM, right? There is Quip for ideating. Uh, we have the CLI, which has been talked about at Salesforce DX. Uh, there are plugins for text editors for making coding enjoyable and fun. Uh, and we have environments for making your actual application changes. We have a few different environments at Salesforce, uh, Scratchworks and Sandboxes. But today, we'll talk about Sandboxes. Sandboxes come in four flavors. Uh, there is Developer, Developer Pro, Partial, and Full Sandbox. Um, sandboxes, in general, are replicas of your production org. Uh, but the Developer and Developer Pro sandboxes just copy over the metadata of your production org. Partial and Full, as you may know, copy over a subset or all of your production org's data. A Developer and Developer Pro tends to be used for um, development unit testing activities. And they're usually used one for every developer. Uh, versus the partial and full sandbox are typically used for performance testing, more end-to-end -end testing where data is required, you know, training your end users. Uh, all of that is done in a full or a partial sandbox. The benefits of ELM are real. People who have used all the best practices of ELM have seen better agility, better speed of delivery to the production org. Uh, as a result, they've seen better innovation, uh, and they've seen a reduction in ID costs. Uh, bugs get caught much earlier in the process before the changes get deployed to production. But with all this tooling that we have provided, we are not yet done. There has been a lot of feedback that you've provided to us over the years around environments. Um, one of the questions we've got are around, you know, how do we easily replicate developer environments? Uh, we have a new developer or tester joining our team and we would like to have the developer ramp up and onboard with this environment as quickly as possible. There's been need for parallelizing tests. Very often you have a team of testers. Uh, maybe there is some front-end tester versus some performance testers. Uh, and you'd like to parallelize that process. And you want to have the same setup um, of your app with the sample data in multiple environments. And finally, even when it comes to staging and user acceptance testing and training, very often the audience is different for these use cases, and you want to be able to replicate these environments. So we are here finally excited to talk about sandbox cloning. Uh, this has been an idea that we've been working on for a very, very long time. It has over 10,000 ID exchange points attached to it. Uh, and so we are finally excited to, to deliver you know, as part of our true to the core initiative. A lot of admins have been asking this. You can see some of the quotes here. Um, this feature should have been in place from day one, and uh, this is a very badly needed feature. So I'm, we are so excited to get this feature in your hands. So how does sandbox cloning work? Like, what is sandbox cloning? Sandbox cloning is in closed pilot in winter 18. We're testing it out with a handful of our participants. Um, when you clone a sandbox, uh, you don't need any new license types. It uses the same license types that you have today. You can use your developer, developer pro, partial and full licenses to create a clone. Cloning a sandbox creates a replica of the sandbox that you're creating. So a developer clone or developer sandbox when cloned will create a developer sandbox. A partial will create a partial. A full will create a full sandbox. All the contents of a sandbox, including any customizations you may have made, uh, to your schema, to any sample data, they all get copied over as part of the clone. So you can imagine that if you have uh, some sample data being loaded into a sandbox, or any manual steps that you have to, to perform in a sandbox, uh, all that can be carried over uh, when you clone. 
And just like any other sandbox that is created from your production org, these clones are isolated from both the production as well as the source org. So each of your developer can be working in their own sandbox and not be stepping on top of each other's toes, but at the same time not be affected, not affecting other developers or your production org. So while we were testing this out, our marketing team had this brilliant idea about um, sending emails, promotional emails, to attendees of Dreamforce based on the sessions and events uh, that they are, uh, that they are uh, uh, going to. And so they came up with this app called Marketing Dream, you know, because why not? Like, let's just spam people. Um, so, that was, <laughs> so that was an app that was a uh, task for our internal dev teams to build. Um, the challenge that we came up with was when setting up these developer environments, um, we had a team of five or six uh, engineers who had to work on this app. And we had to very quickly um, build this app within a couple of weeks of time. And we wanted to replicate the schema that was being used across, uh, you know, that was being used by each developer. Now we could have either gone with a shared developer sandbox and had all the developers just jump into that sandbox, or we could have, you know, the challenge as well. We can also build uh, separate individual sandboxes with each developer getting his own sandbox. Um, and so that was one of the choices where sandbox cloning was very useful for us. Uh, finally, when we were testing and staging this app, we had to hand it over to a separate team to do performance testing, and uh, where a large load of data was needed. You needed a massive amount of data to make sure that this app could you know, render correctly on a, on a mobile phone, and it wouldn't, you know, the pages wouldn't get slowed down as a result of, of, of the massive number of attendees at this conference. Um, so we needed some environment for, performer, for performance testing teams to, to validate our changes. Uh, we also needed the marketing team to kind of get their hands on it and to see how would this app work in, in person. We didn't want them to send out any spam uh, before this app was ready, so we had to do some data masking. We had to change the email addresses, change the telephone information, any personally identifiable information had to, ma had to be masked and then given out to the two individual teams so that they could do the work that they were about to do. So let's see this in action. Let's see how these environments work, how does cloning work, and uh, I'll hand it over to James for a quick demo. All right, thank you, Rohit. Come on. All right, so quick clarification. We're not actually using your real email addresses. We're not gonna be spamming you next week. <laughs> Okay, so this is the app that we started off with. So this is the Dreamforce app. Uh, it's a very simple app that we just put together really quickly. It includes all of your sessions, all your keynotes, and a list of all your attendees. So again, this is all mocked up data. Don't worry about this. But essentially, you can see that there's uh, there's some sensitive information here. You know, we maybe we don't want our email addresses and all the telephone numbers of all of our attendees to be uh, you know, put out into the wild and uh, uh, maybe during testing, we're gonna accidentally send out uh, email messages that weren't ready to be sent out or something like that. So that's where sandbox cloning comes into, a, into play. So for those unfamiliar with cloning, the way, or unfamiliar with sandbox copies, the way you get to it is through the setup. And the fastest way is just do a quick find of sandboxes. And here's your list of UF sandboxes. So what we've done here is, the first thing we did was we created a dev master. So uh, as Rohit was mentioning before, uh, uh, dev master is a clone that we create, or is a uh, sandbox copy that we created, and then we made customizations out of it um, so that we could easily spin up new clones as new developers come on to, come on to our team. Uh, the things that you'll notice here for cloning, again, if you've never, if you've used cloning before, you should see two things right away. You should see the clone link, and you should see a copied from column. So, uh, to show you what it looks like to actually do a clone, so let's go. Let's just say we are adding a new team member uh, to our team, and we want to clone our dev master. So we just click the clone link, 
And again, this is very similar to regular sandbox copies if you've done this before. Let's call, give it a new name, dev new. Uh, this is also new, so there's a create from pull down. So by default, we're uh, creating it from dev mask because that was the link that we clicked. But we can also select like different, uh, uh, what you're actually gonna be cloning from this view as well. So the one thing, one thing to note is the sandbox license. So you can't pick the sandbox license. You're using the exact same sandbox license as what uh, this original sandbox copy was. So if you were to switch this, um, UAT master happens to be a full copy. So if we were to switch that, it would switch to a sandbox license full. Very simple. Click next bucket button, create, and that's it. It's in our queue. Now the other sandbox copies that we have, we have IT Master. So IT Master is our iteration testing. So as the developers are doing their changes, they can go ahead and push their push their code changes into the IT Master for iteration testing. And then we have uh, UAT Master and UAT Marketing. So UAT Master is a sandbox copy, a full sandbox copy that we created. Uh, and we wanted to scrub the data from that so that we could create clones of that instead. To show you, so to show you like what we did here, uh, these are copies that we've already made and clone that we already made. But if we go to the original sandbox copy and we click log in, you know, all we did here is we scrubbed all the emails and telephone numbers. We replaced them with mocked up data because we don't want that going out into the wild. So we made a clone of that, this UAT marketing. And if we log into that as well, we can see our list of attendees is the same. So the changes we made in our original sandbox copy when we made a clone of that, all that got transferred over to the clone. So that is basically it. That's cloning in a nutshell. Cool. I will turn it back over to cool. Bro. Thanks, James. Um, so as you see, it's really easy to work with clones. It's, if you've worked with sandboxes in the past, the creation and the, the setup and and the actual login experience is very similar and very easy to use. Um, and we think cloning is going to be a very big feature um, as, you get, as you start creating more and more sandboxes. I think it's a, a, a feature that was asked for a very long time, and I think um, you know, we are very excited to finally deliver on it. So what's coming up for sandboxes? As I said earlier, sandbox cloning is in closed pilot in winter 18. In Spring 18, we will be opening it up to all users. And also, we will be building API support. So you should be able to programmatically create clones. You should be able to check on the status of your clones. Um, and, and also, you know, you'll see other integrations coming down the line uh, with other aspects of Salesforce DX, which will uh, use take advantage of those APIs. The other feature we are working on is I'm giving sorry. users the ability to select Salesforce version on a sandbox. If you have worked with Sandbox Preview Window, you will understand the pains when it comes to selecting a refresh uh, at the right time and then having to figure out, you know, looking up some map to see, does your Sandbox belong to a preview pod or a non-preview pod? And uh, we're going to try to completely change that experience so that it's much easier for you to work with, with our preview process. So a lot of good information here, but if you would like to learn more, we have a few trails that we have at Trailhead. There's an application lifecycle management uh, trail as well as a change management trail um, that should give you more information about how to get successful with sandboxes and the rest of our uh, ELM tools and processes. With that, that's the end of our demo and our, our session. I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Yeah. yeah. So the question is, an org, for an org that has one full sandbox, will cloning introduce more licenses? Um, so we aren't going to be provisioning more licenses as part of this feature. You're more than welcome to, to purchase additional licenses for each of the types, full, dev pro, partials. Um, so you will need a license of the same type to be able to use the clone functionality. Because you will be creating a full sandbox by cloning a full sandbox. Do the record IDs stay the same? Yes, record IDs stay the same. Org IDs will change, uh, just as in uh, a regular sandbox refresh. Yeah. Cool. 
is there an analogous feature for partner developer orgs? So partners uh, often use partner partners use partner developer orgs, um, but we see partners using more and more uh, scratch orgs as they are uh, as the environment in which they develop. In that case, all your changes are you're working on a different kind of model. You're working on a source-driven model, which is different from this uh, org-centric development model where all your changes and all your metadata belongs to some version control system. So it should be very easy for you to clone and replicate your setup. Yep. And we'll take the feedback and, and we'll we'll take it as a action as an item that we can work on. Question was, the question was, um, for the sake of creating a preview sandbox, can you select a non-preview sandbox and upgrade it to a preview sandbox? The way a preview process works, we have two sets, two sets of pods that get upgraded at different times. Um, our schema, which is built on top of Oracle, doesn't let us do cross-version copies. Um, so it will not let you upgrade from a non-preview to a preview. Uh, but you will be able to select at the time during the preview process, uh, during the preview month. The preview month won't go away. It will just make it easier for you to say what you're about to do and what's your current state of your preview sandbox, or what's the current state of your sandbox. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you should be able to do that. Do you have a question? The version selection. So safe harbor, um, but we think we can deliver it in summer 18. The data scrubbing you did, you did that manually some of the way, right? You didn't do that automatically. Yeah, so the question is, for data scrubbing, did we do it manually or did we have some process? Um, you can write Apex post-copy Apex scripts for data scrubbing. We actually wrote a post-copy Apex script uh, for this data scrubbing. It works. For updating user objects, you do have to write a scheduled apex because users have a little delay in replication at the end of our of, of a sandbox copy. Um, for any other objects that need updating, you can do it via a post copy apex script without a scheduled apex. Yeah, that was pretty much just an example of like you know a clone. You get all the data and metadata copied over from the original sandbox copy. Cool. Correct. Correct. And so the one thing to answer that question, a clone is will refresh, a clone when refreshed is just a brand new org. It will point you back to the source that was used in creating that clone, but at that point you can either change the source or you can keep it to be the same source. Um, you can also create clones of clones of clones. So you can literally create any number of clones that you want as soon as long as you can choose the source. Mm -hmm. Commerce Cloud Sandboxes. Um, so the question is, when will this feature be available for Commerce Cloud Sandboxes? I'm not too sure about Commerce Cloud Sandboxes, um, but this, as it stands for platform, will be available in Spring 18. The question is, can, uh, the or can the source of a clone be deleted without affecting the clone? Absolutely. You can delete. Um, the source and the clone is standalone at that point. Um, the only thing is when you go to refresh the clone, you won't be able to select the same source because it doesn't exist. One question, the question is, can a developer sandbox be created from a full sandbox and is it on the roadmap? It is, today you cannot create it with this cloning feature. You can only clone a sandbox. Um, we are, I'll take it as a feedback item. It's not on our roadmap right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I think we are out of time as well. So thank you for joining us, and thank you for all your questions. Thank you, everyone.